It's a must-use app for Canadian athletes and all members of their teams for the Beijing Games. But cybersecurity experts say it is flawed and it can be hacked. CTV's Vanessa Lee explains. From athletes to journalists, everyone attending the Winter Games must use Beijing's My 2022 app. It requires participants to enter personal information like daily health status, vaccination certificate, and COVID test results. Passport details and travel information are also recorded. Sensitive data, experts say, could be at risk. We found that the way that it transmits uh, data is very insecure. Toronto-based cybersecurity group The Citizen Lab says the app fails to provide proper encryption which could leave user data exposed to interception. Server responses can also be spoofed, allowing an attacker to display fake instructions to users. Unfortunately, if you have to use the app, um, there's, there's not much more you can do other than make sure um, you're on a network that you trust or that you're using a trusted VPN. The Citizen Lab says it contacted the Beijing Organizing Committee last month, but has yet to hear back. The security issues remain unresolved, heightening concerns about data privacy and spying in the country. It's important to know that you are entering China. You are entering a different type of culture when it comes to surveillance and data collection and privacy. Canada's sports minister says athletes have been briefed on the risk of getting hacked and have been told to take extra precautions. The International Olympic Committee is providing burner phones to all athletes to use while they're in China. Vanessa Lee, CTV News, Montreal. Joining us now, Claudia Popa, certified security and privacy expert. Thanks for your time tonight. Thanks for having me on the show. Can you explain a little bit more about what makes this app vulnerable? What is the weakness? Well, the, uh, the grave concern is that any time this app transfers information, so it could be voice chat, it could be real chat, it could be uh, any type of data transfer, that data transfer can be intercepted. So it's as good as not having encryption. And if you don't have encryption, then it can intercept all of that personal information, all the private data, the health information, the passport data that you've got on your phone as a traveler. And that information can be stored elsewhere and perhaps um, uh, stashed away somewhere where where um, Canadian citizens or any other travelers will not have uh, control over it. So it's a grave um, privacy issue. Okay, so let me uh, clarify. Can other information that's on the phone be accessed through this app or only what is sent through that particular app? It's only what it sends, but the problem is we cannot control when it sends. And therefore, it's the, even if the phone itself cannot be accessed, if the app decides that it wants to transfer information or the app can monitor uh, your voice conversations, your data conversations, your storage um, in the cloud, uh, anything of a transfer nature can be surreptitiously uh, spied on. Wow. Okay. So is there an easy workaround? Is there an easy fix to this? Uh, yeah, I mean, this is not rocket science, but you have to be the app vendor, the app manufacturer, mm -hmm. the, the creators of the app. And you have to have a willingness to respect the privacy of users in order to fix this. It's early enough that uh, this can be fixed, and it remains to be seen whether either the Chinese government applies pressure to have this remediated or the vendor itself can have this fixed uh, that would be the the best way to move forward. And certainly uh, by this point in time, um, a number of uh, government agencies have been notified of this and the international community knows about these uh, vulnerabilities. So at this point, there should be global pressure to, to fix this, um, uh, this glaring error. As you may have heard, the workaround for the teams would be burner phones. They're going to be given these burner phones to use. Does that necessarily fix the problem? Because they're still going to have the same app and put in that same sensitive information on that phone. If there's a phone with that app on it, then that phone cannot be trusted, unfortunately. So that app will determine um, how much data collection takes place, what information is surreptitiously 
um, uh, spied on or, or surveilled or copied, tracked, uh, collected. And um, unfortunately, when that happens, the user of the phone, the data subject, as we say, uh, does not have control over even when that information will then be destroyed. In other words, if a government agency decides that it wants to collect that information, then uh, they may be able to store it indefinitely since they will claim that they're not collecting it at all. Claudia Popa, it's unnerving at the very least. Thank you for shedding some light on this. Appreciate that. Thank you.